Hello everyone. Welcome to Controllers Tech. First of all, I would like to thank Abhishek for testing the code, and making the final part of this video, or else I would need to buy another board for this purpose alone. Few weeks ago, I made a video on STM32 USB mass storage class, and the STM32 was in the device mode. That means the MCU was acting as a mass storage device. Today in this video, I will show you how to use STM32 as a host for the mass storage class. This means you can connect your flash drive to it, and read and write some files or folders in the flash drive. Let's start by creating a project in Cube IDE. This time I am using STM32 F4 Discovery Board. Give some name to this project, and click Finish. Here we are in our Cube MX. Open the user manual for your board, it will come handy soon. Let's clear the pinouts first. I am enabling the external crystal for the clock. Let's select the UART for the debugging purpose. Nine thousand six hundred board rate is just a choice, you can select any other two. Now click USB OTG FS and select host only. Make sure you enable the V bus because flash drives don't have any external power supply, so we need to power them via VBUS. As you can see two data pins, and one VBUS pin got selected. Now go to USB host, and select USB mass storage class. Click yes. We will leave everything default here. Now let's enable the FAT file system. We will enable the USB disk as we are interfacing USB. Here we need to make some changes. Enable the long file names. Select the static buffer on BSS. Here you can change the maximum length of the file names. Select the maximum sector size to max possible. If you want to enable EXFAT support, enable it here. There is one very important piece of information about the VBUS that I missed. Go to USB host, platform settings. As you can see here, there is no solution for VBUS. This is because VBUS power must be turned on, and the MacU have a pin connection for that. You will understand it better, when we take a look at the user manual for this discovery board. Here is the diagram, that we need. This right here is our micro USB. As you can see, the V bus is being powered from PC0 pin. PC0 is connected to enable pin, which is an active low pin. This means, in order to turn it on, we need to give a low at PC0, which will turn on the power supply for the V bus. Select the PC0 as output. In the GPIO settings, make sure that it's low. Click save to generate the code. Also note that the VBUS GPIO have a solution now, and that's PC0. 
This is it for the setup. Let's go to our program window. Here is the main.c file. Let's first include the libraries. Put the file handling.c file in the source folder, and file handling.h file in the include folder. Let's refresh the project, so that we can see them. You can change your controller header here. Here you can change the UART. File handling, is exactly the same file that we used while interfacing the SD card. I just made some changes, like brought the USB path here. Other than this, there are some changes in the names at different locations, and that's pretty much all. All the functions are same, as they were in the SD card handling. Now let's go to the file, where we need to make changes. That is usbhost.c file. First, let's include the file handling here. Scroll down to usbh user process. Here we have all the cases like what to do when the USB connects, or disconnects or when it is ready for communication. We are going to write once the USB is ready for communication. First of all, mount the USB. Check the USB details about total and free space. This will list all the directories and files in the USB drive. You can see, we have all these functions available for USB. Let's create a file in the root folder and we will call it rootfile.txt. Write some data to this file. Now I am creating a directory in the root folder and its name is directory1. Create a file inside this directory. Write some data to this file now. The first parameter of write file is the name of the file, that you want to write. And the second parameter is the data. Creating another directory inside the root folder. I am creating yet another directory inside the directory too. and create a file inside subdirectory. Now write some data to this file. We can also update the files. Here I am updating the root file itself. When we wrote the data to root file in the beginning, there was a line break, so this data must be in the second line. This is all for files and directories. Now when the USB is disconnected, we will call the unmount function. Let's build this and flash to our board. First of all I will format the USB so that there are no files and folders present before writing. Let's insert the USB now. I will format it first. 
If you remembered I did enable the XFAT support, so I can format it in XFAT file system. It's completed, there is nothing inside the USB. The serial window here is for keeping the trace of what's happening. Ok, let's run the code now. Connect your USB, and you can see the output on the console. You can pause the video, and read them. Basically, all the operations are completed successfully. I have removed the USB now, and you can see the unmounting also got executed. Let's see the files on the computer now. So, we have two directories, and a root file, just like we created. Data is also in the correct position. Subdirectory is present inside the directory too. It also have exactly the same text, that we wrote in it. root file have both the initial data, and the updated data also. If you insert the USB again, you will see something like this on the serial console. Here, it shows all the files, and directories present on the flash drive, it is represented by the first green line. Now, as these files are already present, new ones can't be created, and that's why there is error and you can see them in the red color. When we write the data to these files, the old data will be overwritten, and the write will be successful, and you can see the green color in between, representing this scenario. I have plans for USB HID for keyboard and mouse, and I will make the video on it very soon. Also, I will make a video on controlling the USB directly via the controller, using some TFT display. But this is it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. You can download the code from the link in the description. Keep watching, and have a nice day ahead.